What's up, Blender Savages? So today I'm going to show you how to make this cool animation here. You have a car here following the path, wheel spinning, you have a road, and you have the camera following it around. So it's great for making music videos, car chase scenes, car commercials, anything your heart desires. All right, so let's get started. You go over here over to Blender. All right, so you want to do is open up your uh, old project here. Of our, I'll show you how to car rig uh, a Tesla truck. So the Tesla truck was downloaded from uh, blendswap.com. And then we create an armature to make the wheel spin. Uh, if you don't know how to set up this uh, car rig, there's a link in the description for the video tutorial on how to make that. And there's also one up here in the top right corner. You can click there. You can also access the, um, the video on how to set up this car rig here for the car. Uh, it works for any car. All right. So this is my previous project. So I'm going to have to uh, clean it up a bit. I'm going to get rid of some stuff here. So first I'm going to select this road that I have there that I made for my other project. Let me go over here to render view. Takes a while to load. Very heavy there. All right, there we go. Here I have a road there. I'm going to click on it. Delete key. There we go. I have an HDRI file to get rid of that. I'm going to go over here to the world. And right here's this color. I'm going to click on this right here. And just click on remove right there. Remove link and it'll get rid of the HDRI. There we go. And let me click right here on my armature. I have some keyframes down there. I might have animated some other stuff. Maybe the camera or something. So I'm going to hit A to select all. There we go, everything selected there. And so now whatever keyframes I have in the whole scene are gonna pop up here on the timeline panel. And I wanna delete all the keyframes there. I don't wanna have any other additional animations to um, uh, clash with my uh, new project here. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna hit A to select all, because right now only has that uh, keyframe selected, I'm at A. Now select all the keyframes down there. Hit the X key and delete keyframes, there we go, cool. So I got rid of that. And let me activate my screencast key so you guys can see what I'm doing, there we go. All right, there's my um, my car. So I just have here my car rig. I don't even have my light in here, which is okay. I'll bring an HDR file later. That'll be my light source. So I got the car rig, got the car, and I got my camera. All right, so I don't want this to um, overwrite my other file. I want to keep that other project there where the car just goes, uh, it's actually going in a straight line, just goes from point A to point B. So I'm going to save this one as a new project. I'm going to go to File, Save As, so it's not to overwrite the old one, and give it a name here. Uh, cyber truck wheel rig uh, path animation Let's see path animation for YouTube there we go YouTube and then I uh, just put it on my desktop for now save that there we go cool all right so I have a new project file here let me hit one for front view and decimal key to zoom in center all right so my truck here in front view is not facing the front so just to make it easier for me I'm gonna have it uh, turn around and face the front because if I hit three for right view I'm actually looking at the back out back out of it. I hit one for front of you. I'm looking at the side of it. So I'm going to rotate it uh, 90 degrees until um, it's facing me. So select the armature there because the um, the car is are uh, paired to the armature there. So it's parented to it. The armature here is the dominant object. Have the armature there selected R 90 enter. Oops, Z key. There we go. R Z 90 enter. There we go. And it's a little bit off center, so I'll try to put it in the center, but it's not too important because later I'm going to offset it again anyways after I make my road. So I'll move it over a bit. BX, and we're moving over. And right there, just eyeball it. doesn't have to be perfect. Well, why am I trying to be perfect? <laughs> I'm going to move it anyways. It's not too important. All right, so I got that going on there. Now I've hit three for right view. It's facing to the left. If you hit R90 enter and it didn't rotate, just keep trying. Sorry, RZ enter. RZ90 enter, and it didn't rotate. Just keep trying RZ90 enter. Until you do get it, um, so it's facing the, the front is facing the front. Hit three for right, you can verify that the front here is facing the front. That's the front side over there. And the front of your vehicle should be facing that way from the right view. Um, if it still doesn't work, you just have to freehand it, R, Z, and then just do this until it's facing the, the right direction. Right now, my pivot point is a little bit off. Uh, that's fine. If I were to move it around, it's going to actually um, mess up the armature rig. So I'll just leave it there as is, off to the side. It's not too important. All right, so I'm going to bring in a plane, shift A mesh, and then select plane. It's going to be my road. All right, it's so right there. It's relatively small compared to everything else. Let me bring it below the tires there, GZ. And about right there looks good. All right, let me hit center for top view. All right, let me try to center it. G for grab, put it around there. It's just center-ish. And I'm going to make it bigger, uh, at least six times bigger than the car. I want to be able to fit three cars in there. In my vehicle here uh, for this project if you follow the directions along in the in the previous lesson it's just six times bigger so 
S6, enter. There we go. And you can see here the width of the vehicle is about uh, two blender units, one, two, and then skip one here, one, two, and leave some space there. One, two, skip one, one, two. So you can easily fit, fit like three of these in there. Let me show you here. Shift D, X, put one there. Shift D, X, put another one there. All right, that's just an example there. So undo, undo. We're going to bring in a row later. Now uh, we're going to make this plane into a road. So there we go. I got the good size there to start with. Now I need to get my UV texture. I need a UV uh, image so I can put it here on the um, on the plane here. So that will be my road. So it'll look a little cooler if it's an actual road. Uh, you can try leaving gray. Make, maybe make it a weird trippy color. Maybe you want a sci-fi scene. That's cool too. But for now, I'm going to go over here to uh, textures.com. Textures.com. Enter. And you get all kinds of textures here, and they're free. Uh, at least you, some of them are free. You have to create an account, and you get 15 credits. So you can download uh, free files here. You can use as textures. So they have bread. I'm always craving bread. Who's not craving bread? Anyways, back over here. You know, I never see tacos in these things, unfortunately. And I want to use a road pattern or a road texture. Uh, instead of just searching here, I'm going to go here to the left side, the left panel. I'm going to look for road. Uh, right there, roads. Cool. Click on it there. Here's a bunch of different roads, and I want something like this, something that has a painted on center divider there. That way you can tell where the center is of the road. Instead of having to try to guess, this one's kind of like, hey, it's a, you can go in the middle if you want. Something like this. I'm going to click on that one. And then scroll through here. These are all cool. And I still want something with the line painted on it. Uh, this one right here, I'm going to go with this one. I like this one for some reason, but... Preferably, you go with something that has grass on the side. It looks a little neater. If you have grass or dirt on the side of the edge of your road, and paint it on. Uh, the cracks are always awesome. See, this one's cool, too. The cracks are good. Uh, it does give it a little bit more realism. Uh, you, when you do drive on these roads, you know, they do have limits. They're not all perfect. Even the freshly painted ones. Actually, the, friend, the fresh, freshly made ones do look a lot neater than the, uh, than the worn ones. But the worn ones, I like that better. looks less artificial. So I'm going to use this one right here. All right, and you can see here's different varieties of it, and then I created my account, and then I can click on one of these here, get the free version. Uh, these are the ones you have to uh, sign up for the membership for, you have to pay for, and those are just higher quality, larger images, higher resolution, but um, what I got here is fine. Uh, so I already got it. It says purchased. I just clicked on free, where it said free right here, and it downloaded onto my computer, and usually, typically, when you download something off the internet, it goes to your downloads folder. So let me go back over here to Blender. And I'm going to go to UV editing, UV editing right here. All right, and where's my road? Let me hit the decimal key. There it is. Cool. So when you go to UV editing, make sure you go in there with your plane selected, plane selected. Go to UV editing workspace there, and you should have your plane selected there. And now I'm going to bring in the material for it, which is going to be um, that, that UV map there, the UV image. Uh, select materials here on the properties panel. Click on new. And you don't have to name it. We're not, we don't have a lot of materials going on right here, but I'm going to name it anyways, road. Go down to base color and click on this yellow diode here. And then go to image texture, image texture. And then click on open. And then look for that image you just downloaded off the internet. So I'm gonna click on downloads. And then scroll through here. And it's this one right here, seamless. Also, I forgot to mention, when you're looking for images here, uh, make sure they're seamless. Make sure it says seamless. <clears throat> uh, seamless means that right here where it cuts off, it'll just repeat on the other side. Because if it's not seamless, it's gonna look like a grin. It's gonna have like this great pattern. It's gonna you're gonna be able to tell that it's an image. Uh, right here where it's sim or seamless, it'll just repeat on this side and it's seamless. It'll be a seamless transition. Whereas these are just obvious. It's gonna have a line through there where one side does not match the other side. So you want to go with seamless because we're gonna array this road so it continues going forward. So we're not gonna stretch it out because it's just gonna distort it. We're just gonna in a way we're gonna kind of paste it over. Uh, it's called an array, array modifier. We'll get to that in a bit. All right, so back over here to my project, there's my uh, image and UV map. Let me scroll out, it's super zoomed in. All right, and it's on there. Let me go over here to render. And notice by bringing it in here as a, as a texture here, as a, U, as a UV image, the texture image, it uh, brought it over here too, so I don't have to go over here and bring it in. Uh, so there it is. Doesn't look very neat. And it is a story because you look at the image here, the resolution is different. It's longer here, and then right here it's a little shorter. Let me click out of there, and you can see it better. You can see there, um, it's kind of squeezed up. So what we can do, we can adjust for that. So over here, 
and we'll move my mouse on my left side here in the UV editing window. I'm hit the end key for Nancy. And I get the sidebar menu here, and it gives me the resolution data. So here you can see the image is 1024 by uh, 418. 1024, the first number there is always get. The second number is the Y, 418 right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust for that and, and reshape my plane so it matches that information there. So it has the same uh, height-width ratio. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use a calculator. Let me bring up my calculator here. Let's see, calculator, calculator. Why is my calculator loading? All right, so I got my calculator now. So what I'm going to do is to be, I'm going to hit a 1024 and divide it by 418. All right, 10 to 4 divided by 418. There you go. And then my number is 24497 and all these other numbers here. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here, hit 8 as I go. Uh, not the act, it's not the active window, so I'm going to click here on, on the header there. 8 as I go. There we go. And I'm just selecting the plane there. I'm in edit mode. So the only thing I, I can select is the plane there. And I'm going to click right here on this yellow icon right here, object properties, this yellow square. And there we go. And then right here, we're transform scale. Here's the X and the Y. See, Z is the height. It's flat, so there's not really much height on it. Uh, X, that's that right there. And then Y is 418. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the X number there, that X value, and multiply it by that. So that, I'm just going to multiply by 6. So remember, we scaled it up earlier by 6, so it was uh, S6 enter. So your values might be different if you scaled it up differently. So what I'm going to do is uh, just multiply this by 6 times 6, enter. And then my answer is 14.6985. So I'm just going to type it in here for the X, 14.685. Let me double check that. 14, 6, 9, 14, 6, 9, 8, 14, 6, 9, 8. There we go, enter. And there we go, cool. So it adjusted there for the, for the resolution there. And so now, as you can see there, they're the same shape, same rectangular shape set of the square. All right. Uh, my plane, uh, it's not going in the same direction as the vehicle, so I'm just going to rotate it, hit A to select all, R, Z, 90, and, and there we go. That's all I needed to do there. Cool. Everything looking good. Yeah, if you don't like this glare that you're getting there on your plane, just go over here to materials and reduce the specular, and you'll get less of that glare there. See, there we go. It's gone. That actually works for a lot of things right there. You get a little glare, just reduce the specular. All right, back to layout. I'm done with the UV editing there. And I'm going to hit the tab key with the plane select to take it to edit mode. And I want to give it more of a 3D looks because it's literally just a flat sheet there, just a flat image there. So I'm going to stand for top view. And I'm in edit mode here. And I'm going to create uh, some topology here for the uh, edges of the road. So for this edge there and this edge there. Because uh, in the real world, uh, this road here, the blacktop, would be higher than the grass, right? And then the middle part's usually a little higher as well. It's elevated, so when it rains, the water just washes off to the sides. So I'm going to hover my mouse over here along the top part. I'm going to hit Control R. And there we go. I got a yellow, yellow line there. I'm going to create a loop cut so I can have an edge going there. I'm going to click one time and bring it over to the edge. I'm just going to guesstimate where it is. It doesn't have to be super accurate. There we go. Click there. And now back over here on the top edge, Control R, left click. Pull out the mouse to the other edge there and left click there. All right, so now I'm going down the middle. And if you notice here, uh, the middle is a little bit off center. There's the Y axis there. And then the yellow line is off to the right a little bit. So you can try having your loop cut going down that center or down the center over here. It's not too important. It's not, you know, it's not really going to be noticeable. Later, I'm going to add a modifier that's going to smooth everything out. So you won't notice it that much. So I hit Control R, left click. And cool is actually there in the middle, but sometimes you might get it over here, but that's fine right there. All right, cool. So now, actually, first, I'm not going to add that one yet. I'm going to hit undo real quick. There we go. Face selection. Later, I'll add the other one because now I want to extrude this up a bit right here. I'm going to extrude this up a bit. So I got rid of that one in the center. I just hit Control-Z. I'm going to extrude this up a bit. E.1, enter. There we go. E.1, enter. And now it's extruded up. And we click out of there, see it looks a little neater. And now I have the center one there. Center top view, control R, enter, enter. There we go. And then I'm going to hit one in front view, and I'm also going to pull that up. So I'm going to pull that up right there. G, Z, point one, enter. There we go. Got some curvature there. So when it rains, water comes off and lands over here on the side. There we go. That's what we're trying to do. 
All right, so notice the road is in the, um, the vehicle here is in the middle of the road. That's okay. We'll adjust it later. All right, so tab key, and there we go. So I'm done there modeling the road. So next, I'm going to add the modifiers here for the road. So I'm going to, I'm going to use an array modifier. That way I can uh, continue the road here. And let me bring in a light so you guys can see better here. Let's bring in a light right here. It looks a little dark in there. GZ, GX. And this is only because uh, I don't have a light. There you go. So you can see the road there a little neater. The old cool little textures there. All right, so I'm going to select my road there. And then I'm going to go over here to modifier, add modifier, and I'm going to select array. There we go. So it's raining, it, and it's going in the direction that I don't want it to go. So I want it to go over here along the Y. If you look at right here, factor X, uh, one, that means it jumps over one blender unit along the uh, X axis. So I'm going to hit zero for that. And I'm going to change it to Y instead right here. I'm going to change it over here to the Y. I'm going to hit one. It goes and it goes that way. But I want it to go this way, so I want to change it to negative one, minus one there. And there we go, cool. And then over here for count, uh, pick a number between 15 and 20. I'm gonna go with 16. Later, I'm gonna add a, a curve and it's gonna follow a curve. There we go, so now we have a nice long road there. Uh, but, a, but a straight road just kind of boring, so we'll add some curvature in there. It looks, uh, looks very artificial. You want things to look kind of random, a little, little less artificial, makes it look a little more realistic. All right, and now I'm going to go over here to add modifier again. This time I'm going to add the curve modifier. Curve right here, curve. There we go. And I haven't added the curve yet, so I'm just going to leave that as is right there because later I'm going to sample the curve here, and then our road right here is going to follow the shape of the curve. I'm going to go add modifier again. Now I'm going to add subdivision surface. There we go. As you can see there, it's already distorted, so I'm just going to increase this number here to 2. And it just is a bit, but later um, with the curve modifier, it's actually going to curve this whole road, and uh, it's going to blend these in a little neater. Oh, one more thing. forgot to add merge right here. That'll actually fix that right there. There we go. So that patched that up right there. Uh, but later when we do add the curve, the, the turn's going to look very sharp. And by adding the subdivision surface, it'll smooth out the turns there that we have. That's okay there. Just uh, don't have that on your scene right there. Just get it out of the, make sure it's outside of the camera frame. All right, so next I'm going to bring in my curve. Uh, make sure your, um, your 3D cursor is at the world origin. If not, hit Shift S. Shift S. What's going on? Oh, wrong key. Shift S. Cursor to world origin. There we go. Now it's at the world origin. And I'm going to hit Shift A and bring in my curve. Go here to curve and bring in a path, a path curve, just a straight line. All right, I brought it in. You can't see because it it's really small. It's in here somewhere. Shift Z for wireframe. Small compared to everything else. There it is. So it's going along the X axis. I'm going to make this 100 times bigger. S100 enter. There we go. You can see it now. And I'm going to rotate it so it goes along the Y. R, Z, 90 enter. There we go. Cool. All right, so now I'm going to take it to edit mode, tap key for edit mode, and you can see here it has some, some handles here, some pins, some points. I'm going to select the ones on each end, so I'm going to click on this one here. Hold on shift key, click on that one there. There we go, set them for top view. And I'm going to pull them out this way along the x-axis. It's going to be G, X, minus 100. Enter, there we go. And as you can see, there, there's our actual curve. That's what our path is going to follow right there, our uh, array road there. So I'm going to go back to object mode. There we go. And Shift Z for solid views. That way you guys can see better. I'm going to click right here on my road. And then I get the arrays here for the road. And uh, this order is important. Make sure the array is here at the top. If not, if for some reason you brought in the curve first, you can actually hold these, uh, these little dots here on the right side. You can hold down the left mouse button and drag. But you want the array there to be first. Uh, the subdivision one, you can have it in between. It'll just smooth out differently. But right now it looks good. All right, so for curve object here, I'm going to click in there. And I'm going to select Nervous Path. And it's way off. There it is. Cool. So it's there. And it looks like maybe I have to change the, uh, the minus right here. Let's see. Make it 1. There we go. So I had to flip it over. Set a minus 1. I just made it 1. And now it's back on the road there. And check out that road. Cool. And that's where the turns are at. That's where uh, 
a new array pieces app, but thanks to the subdivision surface modifier, smooth it out. Let's see if I increase it, if it'll smooth it out a little better. And then also, um, because of the smooth division surface modifier, it kind of got rid of some of that, that sharp edge corner there. Uh, let me show you what it looks without it. So I'm going to close it. See those sharp corners right there? So I don't like those. Uh, maybe you want those there, but I don't want those there. So that's why I added the subdivision surface modifier. And there we go. And increase this one to two. And like I mentioned earlier, you can actually have it before the curve there. Uh, that looks a little neater, so I'll leave it right there in between the curve and the uh, and the array modifier. All right. Okay, so now I want the car to also follow the the path. So I'm gonna zoom into my car there, click on the armature. There we go. And then over here in the properties panel, I have bone constraints there. Actually, we're not gonna use that. I'm gonna use regular constraints. This one here, constraints right there, object constraint properties. Boom. And then go right here to add object constraints and select follow path. Follow path there. And right here for target, it's going to be a nerves path there. And boom. So I put our car over there on the path. So I got to go try to find it. So I'm going to hit the decimal key. Zoom and center it. And it's way off. Way off. And I want to do right here is um, try to get it on the curve. So I'm going to click on follow curve. Decimal key again. And so off the curve. So I want to change these right here. So the forward axis, which is the front of it. You want to tell it what, um, uh, what direction you want to be the front. So let me try X. See if it puts it on the curve, still didn't work. Let me try Z there, minus X, minus Y, minus Z. That didn't work. Uh, this one you want to leave as is. But if you can't get it to get on the on the road, select uh, whatever is closest to it. Let me try X there, Y. And is it facing the right direction at least? Nope, so minus Y will probably give it the right direction there. Set up for top view, decimal key. And there we go, that's the right direction there. And I'm just going to physically pull it down in there. So I'm going to GY, pull it down onto the road. Oop, super fast. GY. Come on, not so fast. Let's see, there we go. Decimal key. And I'll try to put it on there. G for grab. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Click right there. I'm going to do small little changes here. GY, pull it down. Around there. G for grab. Come on. Let me right click, turn that off. Let's see. GY, pull it down a bit. GY, if you lose your control of it, just right click to turn off the tool. There we go. <clears throat> now it's way in the air, one for top view. Uh, GZ, pull it down. As you can see here, it can be very frustrating. Click there, that's some keys in the center. It. If you're snapped onto it right away, that's good. But um, you might have these issues that I'm getting right now. Just got to try to get it on there, GZ. This is where the pivot points do come in handy. The origins. There we go. Zoom into it some more. And GZ, see if I can get it on the road there. Let me just try uh, punching in a number. GZ minus point to enter. That didn't work. GZ minus point zero zero two. There we go. GZ minus point zero zero one. There we go, that works. And it's on the right side of the road there. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna hit the play button, see what happens there. All right, nothing yet, pause it. And it looks like I'm off to um, change these again. Let me try minus X, play button. So I'm moving. Let's see, let me go back to minus Y, enemy path. All right, now play button, there we go. So now it's following the path there. And it stays on the correct side of the road. Uh, if you zoom out like this and you can't see anything, that's uh, called clipping. That's just from your viewport. If you want to be able to still see, hit the N key for Nancy. And then uh, go up here to View, View tab. And then right here, Clip Start, Clip End. Just change this number to something a lot higher than 1,000. So let me try 100,000. 1, 0, 0. 1, 2, 3. There we go. Now you can see a lot further. All right. So there's my vehicle there. So we have a large scene here. So that's just, that's just what's going to happen. Decimal key, pause it, go to the last frame. Decimal key, there we go. <clears throat> All right, so back to frame one. Decimal key. All right, pause it, went to frame one. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the camera. I'm also gonna parent the camera there to the path. Let me zoom out, look for my camera. Uh, it's actually just easier. If you go up here, it's like the camera there. There you go, now your camera's selected, it's right there. 
And then also go to constraints, add object constraints, and we're also going to follow path on that one. Follow path. There we go. And it's over here in the center of the path there. Let's see, follow curve. And are we in frame one? We are. Uh, I want the camera to be over here where the car is at. So let me try X, see if any of these will move it over. None of those are moving it over. Let me hit zero for camera view. All right, enemy path. Hit the play button. And the camera's not moving. Oh, sorry, I know what's going on. I forgot to select the curve. Let me go and pause that back to frame one. And then right here, nerves path. There we go. So now she follow the curve. Oh, super far away. So let me go over here to Y, Z. All right, where's Z at? So far away, X, Y, Z. All right, so what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to zoom into my vehicle here. I'm just going to reposition it. Let's see, zero for camera view. See how it sees. All right, it's still in the upright position. I think I'm going to leave that as X. Let me zoom into my vehicle here. Click on the armature there. Decimal key to zoom and center it. And just choose an angle. This one looks good. And I'll make this my new camera view. Control, turn to zero. Move my camera over here, but I think it's facing the wrong direction. So I'm just going to rotate it. R, Z. It's not letting me rotate it. Center for top view. Where's the camera at? And it's way over there. Why did it still move way over there? Let's try it again. Control, turn to zero. Oh, it doesn't like it. Let me not do that. Get it closer there. Undo, undo. All right, so now it's a lot closer. Zero camera view. So we're just going to scale in from here. Then that didn't work. Uh, G, Z, Z. Zoom in from there. G for grab. Move it over. Left click. G, Z, Z. There we go. G for grab. G, Z, Z. Trying to zoom into the vehicle here. Uh, you could just be over here from my like top view. And grab the camera try to readjust it that's a lot more challenging I'm trying to do this the g for grab move it around see as you can see there's very jumpy see over camera view this is a lot easier here r z g for grab g z z and we're going to zoom into the vehicle there g z go up r z i want to point the car there g z cool uh whatever angle you have the car it's up to you well, I guess I'll leave mine like that. I'll try pulling it down, but that's cool there. Maybe I can rotate it a bit. There we go, GZ. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so now my camera will start there. Hit the play button. And there we go. And it starts moving around it. There we go. It went off a bit, but you can always adjust it as well. You can actually go to those other um, frames where it's off, and you can rearrange the camera. Right here, about 50. Try starts to go off, so I can actually rotate it here, RZ bring it over but I'm gonna do this later because right now I only have 100 frames so let's adjust for that I'm gonna increase here the end to 250 and I'm gonna select my curve so I'm gonna select it here from the uh, outliner because it's a lot easier then I'm gonna go over here to the backward C for curve data open path animation don't click on that because you're gonna turn it off so leave that active there and change the frames here to 250 that way the um, it takes 250 frames for it to reach the end of the curve so now I'll hit the play button. Now we can see the, um, the car should go all the way to the end at 250 there. Let's see, let it start over. All right, so there's a car there at the end. Just the camera didn't get it in the shot. All right, so we start with the car there. And the camera moves a lot faster than the vehicle. And you want to keep the camera there on the vehicle. So let's put the, uh, oh. Just rotate it then. Zero for camera view. R, Z. The car there in the shot. G, Z, Z. G, Z, Z. There we go. Just keyframe that. I forgot to keyframe the first one, so I'm not to rearrange it again. See, there we go. And R, Z, Z. And this could be very frustrating, as you can see. G, Z, Z. You get here to the car, Z, Z. Oh, R, Z. G, Z. G, Z, Z. Pull out. There we go. And 
maybe do another another pull like that. All right. R Z Z or just R Z. There we go. Then if I want to go that way, it's going to be G X X. I can just pan over left to right directly. There we go. Ah, that's cool. I'll leave it like that. I key. All right, skill. There we go. Dang, not what I was looking for. All right, so as you can saw here, I was struggling to try to adjust the camera. And um, I figured it out. It was a little glitch, I think. So um, I realized that the camera was actually moving faster than the car. The camera would reach the end before the car got there, so it made it harder to adjust the camera. So what I did, I um, selected the curve, and then I went over here to curve data. And then I changed the frames here back down to 100. And then I changed it back to 250. And so now when I play, the, uh, the camera moves at the same speed as the vehicle. So it'll make it harder, it'll make it easier for me to adjust the camera to a vehicle. So you can see there. So it looks like it only did the 250 for the car, but it didn't do 250 for the, uh, the camera constraint. And I don't know what caused that, but I'm going to guess it's a glitch. So I can still try to adjust my camera here. And also I deleted the keyframes that I had down there. With the camera selected, I went down here, hit A, then I hit the X key and deleted all the keyframes. And so now um, I think I changed it to X here. You go to Y, see what it looks like. Follows it a lot neater there. Z, well, Z is way off. So minus Y, go back to the first frame there. And that seems to follow it nice and neat there. Then here at the end, it's a little bit off, so you can try to adjust that. So first, I want to adjust the uh, the camera, the, the position of the camera at the beginning of the animation. So here it is, the beginning there. And I think I'll start doing that last. So long as following now, it's good, because later I'm probably going to make some adjustments here to the car. So I'll adjust the camera later. All right, so next I'm going to go to hrihaven.com. So I can choose an HRI file, a background file there for my project. And see here, you go, it's a car scene somebody made. HDRIs, there you go. Just choose something appropriate for your scene. Uh, for instance, you probably don't want to go with an indoor scene here, unless you're making like a little small um, Hot Wheels uh, racetrack or something, that'd be cool. And what do we have here? Outdoor scenes, these are all good. Uh, that's cool, these uh, indoor scenes not gonna work for me. There's one that I like to use for outdoor scenes. It's called uh, Kiara Dawn. Let's see if I can find it it's a little further down. Or for these car scenes, I like to use this one called Kiara Dawn. I've used it in a few projects. Uh, this one right here, I like to use this one here. And then, because there's really not like a lot of buildings there. There's some buildings down there, we can try to hide them. And then it's like a nice landscape scene. So these landscape ones, I think, work well for this project. And usually I just download the 4K version. Uh, I get students sometimes they right click here and save the image. That's not an HDR file, that's an image. So you want the HDRI file, HDR file. So 4K is good enough. These other ones have a um, higher resolution, better quality, but 4K is good enough. You just click there and you download it. I've already downloaded it before. Like I mentioned, I use it often. So I actually have a folder where I have it in there. So I'm gonna go over here to the World tab and I'm gonna click on the yellow dial next to color. And then I'm gonna click on Environment Texture. I'm gonna look for that file open. If you just downloaded it off the internet, it's probably in your downloads folder but I have an HRI folder for, for my HRI. So there it is, Carol Don, open image. Wait for it to open. And it's there it is, it's still loading, there it is, cool. So there's mine. I can just angle the camera so that you don't see the, the land. Uh, so a bit of distortion there from the subdivision service modifier, but it's cool. I just don't have to get that in the shot. Uh, there we go. Maybe you can make a rainbow bridge. Maybe your vehicle's going, uh, was it Valhalla? No, Valhalla. Uh, it's the name of the city Thor lives in, can't remember. All right, so now I'm gonna make small adjustments here. So your car might be inside of your, your plane there. All right, that's not bad. I don't mind that at all right there. That's cool, I'll leave it like that. Uh, your car might not be on the proper lane. So mine's a little bit off to the edge over here. So let me just move it over, seven for top view, G for grab, and oh, 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 here we go again. So maybe I'll just leave it there. I don't wanna play around with that. So now I'll just as a camera here, zero for camera view. You don't want to get that shot there, so I'm going to adjust the camera here, G for grab. And there we go, I'm running out of space, so no worries, I'll get an external hard drive. 
Let me go over here to constraints. There it is. And notice I don't have follow curve or fixed position activated. That way um, it's still going to follow the curve, but I'll get this better look. Uh, GZ, I bring it down slowly. Oh, let me just try it. All right, so just to the camera there in the first frame. So I went with this view here. That way I don't get the, the back there. Uh, as you can see there, the wheels are not spinning. Earlier, I did have another issue where the camera would actually move a lot faster than the, than the car. The camera would reach the end before the car. So to fix that, I went to nervous path over here, went down a curve, and I brought this back down to 100. Then I changed it again to 250 because I think it's a glitch. A glitch. Earlier when I changed it to 250, it didn't, um, didn't adjust the camera. The camera will get there at 100 frames, and then the car will get there later at 250. So I just redid it again, and then both of those uh, followed there along. So there's my camera. Let me select my camera, and back over here to constraints. And notice I don't have fixed position or follow curve there on the camera. I only adjust it there on the first frame. And then later I went over here to these other frames and make new adjustments here because um, uh, around here the camera would go off and it wasn't really on the car anymore. So I made an adjustment there to keep it on the car. So if you notice right there, in this area here, the tire kind of gets clipped off. So I can actually try to bring it back in. So I can go over here to, let's try frame 180. And I hit G for grab and adjust the camera so I can keep that in there. It's just really hard to control at this point here because everything is massive. GZ.001. So I'll just make a small adjustment there. GZ.005. Let me see. GZ minus 0.002. There you go. So I got that tire in there. I made I, location rotation scale, and it got that in there. See? So now it keeps it there in the shot a little bit better. It's a little bit off over here. Maybe I can bring it down over here to have that tire in there as well. GZ minus 0.001. GZ minus 0.001. There you go. GZ minus 0.002. There you go. So I got that in there. I key. Location, rotation, scale. There we go. So we go to up and down. I don't hit GZ by itself because it's really, it's really sensitive. So I hit GZ 0 .00 and then a number uh, to help me make those small adjustments there. There you go. So I got that tire there a lot better in the shot, and then it just ends up here on the rear of the vehicle. And there we go. I'll make the adjustment for the tire spinning in a bit. I got a little bit low right there. Maybe I don't want to get that uh, in the shot there. You're gonna see that um, you're gonna see the edge of the road there, the edge of the world. I can try to bring it up right there as well. Just make a frame in there somewhere. GZ.002. There you go. So now I got out of there. Now I'm gonna keyframe that. I key. Location rotation scale. And yeah, I don't get that in there anymore. Stays up a little higher. There we go. It ends off with there at the end there. Going off into the abyss. And there we go. And the last frame also adjusted it, so I'd have the camera there right next to the car. Uh, if you want to move the camera left and right, hit G, then X two times, X, X. And then you can shift left and right. You can do stuff like that. And I don't mind about, I don't mind that right there. That's actually um, due to the subdivision surface modifier. And it could kind of be a mirage. I don't know if anybody will even notice that right there. All right. But I want the tires to spin. So let me go back over to the first frame. And I'm going to click here on the uh, armature. I'm going to go over to pose mode. Pose mode. There we go. And I'm going to activate the wireframe. Shift Z for wireframe. And then I'm going to select. I'm going to try to select. Let me zoom in center there again. Decimal key. There we go. Uh, one of these green uh, axle bones right here. The ones that make the tire spin. So select those. Uh, activate the wireframe. It's easier to select the ones that are um, inside the car. Difficult to see. Um, so I'm going to start out with this one right here. And I'm going to go over here to the properties panel and go to bone constraints. And right here where it says Y minimum and Y max, that's how far your car has to travel to make a 360 degree turn. And this band that we're traveling is really wide. So um, I'm going to decrease this really small. I'm going to decrease this 0.1. And then this one will be minus 0.1. And then the 360 right here, I'm actually just going to multiply it by 6. So... 360 times 6 is 2160. So I'm going to type in there 2160. 
and then I'm going to copy it. Control A to select all, Control C to copy. And I'm going to go right here, minus Control V to paste. So 2160 and minus 2160. And you have to do this for each individual tire. So for each individual axle here. So I got that one there. So all the green ones. And we'll go to this one next. So that's point 0.1. Make sure it's point 0.1. If you just use one, you're not going to rotate that fast. You're going to rotate really slow. Uh, your tires, it's going to look like your car is uh, sliding on the, on the ice. Minus point 0.1. I'm going to paste right here. 2160 over here minus control v paste minus 2160 all right so in a point one blender units it'll rotate 2160 degrees because the car is moving faster so it should uh it should spin a lot faster so i'm gonna go here with this rear tire i'm gonna change this one up point one minus point one then now here just paste my answer again 2160 minus control v paste 2160 and then this one right here point one and then minus point one and then paste right here. And if you paste it first before the minus, that's okay. You can just paste it and then uh, click in there again, move the mouse. Uh, sorry, uh, click the left arrow to move to the left over here and then just add the minus there. Or you can also click over there to get you in there. So minus 2160. All right, cool. So now they've all been adjusted there. Now I'm gonna pull the car back a little bit. I'm gonna select the top bone here, center for top view. I can also pull it forward. Just make a slight adjustment there. I'm gonna turn on the record button. That way it records this movement. Make sure you're on frame one. Select your main top bone there, the handle. G for grab and just move it just a bit. There you go, that's enough right there. You don't move too much because like I mentioned earlier, it's very sensitive, it's hard to handle. So I'm gonna go over to the last frame and then I'm at the decimal key to zoom and center my vehicle because it's, uh, it's on the other side of the curve now. Decimal key, there we go, let me zoom out. Now I'll pull it, pull it forward a bit, G for grab. And there we go. You can see there on the little movements, you can see the tires already spinning again. All right, I'm gonna turn off the record button. There we go. And then zero for camera view. And then hit the play button just to test it out. There you go, it's spinning. There you go. Shift Z for solid viewport shader. Let it load. And they're spinning. There we go. And then back over here to object mode. And they're spinning. If you want them to spin faster, you can actually um, uh, decrease uh, the value of the 0.1 to something smaller. Or you can also increase the, uh, the rotation uh degrees there as well yeah it's going pretty slow to me so let me try chain increasing it uh shift z pose mode and that's more key to zoom center let me select one of these bones here and now i'm just going to double this one up right here 2160 double it or triple it let's triple it 2160 times three is 6480 6480 so 6480 here 6480 uh, you might not have to make these changes as drastic as mine, but um, this is what I'm going with right here. Let me copy this one, Control C. There we go. Over to this button over there. Control V paste. Minus Control V there. Select this one there. Control V paste. If you see a little D in there, that's okay. That's that's four degrees. I mean, like you see that the little D right there could be uh, confusing. Like, yeah, hey, I didn't put that there. There you go. And then minus. There we go. All right, so they're all 6480 now. So let's see how it plays now. Go back over here to camera view, zero camera view. There you go, spin a lot faster now. That seems to make more sense. So object mode, shift Z for solid. And there we go. There we go. They do start off kind of slow. Um, let's see, we can try to change that. So I tried changing it before, but there was like no uh, no option for it. I'm gonna go to graph editor here, click on the timeline. You can go to graph editor, and then I don't even have a, a graph here for the uh, the home key. There it is, a graph for the armature. There's a graph. You go over to key and interpolation mode, easy type, but they're grayed out. And then try it in pose mode here. And they're still grayed out. I can right click here and try doing it there as well, but it's not allowing me to change it. Let me try it on this one. Let's see if this one has it here. So I selected the, the main bone there. So I'm going to try to see if it has interpolation. Cool. That one does have interpolation. So I'm going to go over here with uh, ease in and ease out. To start out slow. But actually, it's actually, um, it doesn't start out slow. The curve has no uh, keyframes on it. So then the curve, I cannot um, ease in or ease out. So I have to make this constant. So it has a constant speed. And it stays fast throughout the whole thing. There we go. Constant. And now the wheels don't have to speed up. It'll, it'll just start fast. 
you get the car in motion there. Object mode, spacebar for play. And now you don't want to spin on me. Look at that. How horrible. All right, so we're just going to undo that. Control Z. No, all right. So back to the timeline here. All right. So there we go. We have a nice clean animation there. And now just to render this out, I'm going to go over here to the render uh, camera, render tab, activate ambient occlusion so I can get uh, some of the additional shadows there, bloom for the glow on the lights right there. See, there it is. And motion blur so I can get some motion blur. And uh, if you don't want to get these frames here where the wheels have to uh, start speeding up for turning, what you can do is uh, go over here to output and just change what frame you start at. So you can have it start out at a later frame. Let's see, when do they start to go faster? Yeah, pretty much at frame 20, they're already going faster. So you can change the frame start here to 20. Now you don't have to worry about them um, having to speed up later. There we go, coming into an end right there. Now that's like I saw a little bit of it, that's all right. And then make sure it changes to AVI JPEG. And then go to the folder here and then uh, choose the name and location to save your file. In the render, you can hit Control F12 to render an animation, or you can go over here to render and select render animation and wait patiently for your animation to render. All right, so there it is. Got my nice little car commercial there. Wheel spinning, good camera angles there. Cool. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. If you would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, add a comment, share, anything helps. Have an awesome day. Take care. Bye.